Hello everyone. Today I'm going to share a question from this brilliant website, and I found this question in the community tab. So I click into the community, and then there are many, many very interesting problem. And let's go to my problem. So the problem I choose is this slash the triangle. We can have a look on the question. There is an equilateral triangle, which is split. By a line into two regions with equal perimeters, find the maximum ratio of the areas of the two regions. So the two regions are the upper part, this triangle, and the quadrilateral below it. So now we will cut the triangle at two random points on the adjacent sides. Without the laws of generality, we will assume each side length of the triangle to be one, because The ratio for a smaller and larger equilateral triangle will be the same. So the perimeter of each shape is equal to the sum of the red and blue parts, which is here. Notice that the red part is the common side length, and the total length of all blue parts will be the total perimeter of the equilateral triangle. And so, for each shape. The blue part will be three over two, so we'll focus on the triangular shape for easy calculation. We'll assume one side length of the blue part to be x, which is here, and the other part, which is three over two minus x, which is here. And the included angle is sixty degrees, so we can use the area of a triangle, which is half AB sine theta. We put in all the unknown and the angle, and after some algebra, we can get a quadratic expression. So this quadratic function will have a maximum value. So we can use the formula for the vertex. X equals negative b over 2a to find the x coordinates of the vertex first, which is 3 over 4, and then we plug in this value. Into the function, so we can get the maximum value for the red triangle to be nine root three over sixty-four. So now, if the area of the triangular part is maximum, then the lower quadrilateral part will be minimum, since their total area is constant, which is root three over four. So the maximum ratio of the area between them will be this expression. So after some simplification, we will get nine over seven. The reason I chose this problem is because if we interchange the words perimeters and areas, we will get an entirely new problem. Now let's start again. We know that the total area of the equilateral triangle is root three over four. So if we if we halve it, then we will get the red and green part. The area are both root three over eight. We will focus again on the red triangle. We assume three sides to be x, y, and z. So using the area formula, we can easily get x times y to be half. Now we consider the sum of x and y first. Let s be x plus y. So we have the formula. X y equal half. So we make y be subject, and we will have one over two x, and we can put it into this formula. And we would like to check its extreme values, so we'll do it by differentiating s with respect to x. After some calculation, we can get x, which is a one over root two. And then we differentiate the function s again to get the second derivative, which is one over x cubed. And by substituting x equals one over root two into the second derivative, we can get the value of it to be two root two, which is greater than zero. So this result shows that the s x plus y will be minimum. When x equals one over root two, so how about z? 
we'll see be a maximum or minimum value for some values of x or y. So we apply the law of cosine and then we put in the x y to be half and also y to be 1 over 2x so that we can get an expression which involves only z and x. We apply implicit differentiation on both sides and then we make dc over dx be the subject so we can get this expression. So we set dc over dx to be 0 to check for its max, mean or point of inflection. Notice that z is always greater than 0 since it is the side length of a triangle. So we can solve x to be equal to 1 over root 2 after some algebra. So now we want to check the concavity of the function. But I know that to find the second derivative is very time consuming and complicated. So we will arrange dc over dx first. Notice that we can factorize the expression in the numerator two times. And then for these terms, z which is greater than 0, 2x squared plus 1 which is greater than 0, x which is greater than 0 also, and root 2x plus 1 also greater than 0. So we'll have one term here, root 2x minus 1, which can be negative. So we can check that for x greater than 1 over root 2, the dc over dx will be positive. And for x less than 1 over root 2, dc over dx will be negative. And we can conclude that the z attains its minimum when x equals 1 over root 2. And we apply the simple formula before, and then we can find y to be equal to 1 over root 2 also. From the diagram, if both x and y equals to 1 over root 2, with the included angle to be 60 degrees, then the red triangle will become an equilateral triangle. And so C will also be 1 over root 2. So we can find the maximum ratio of parameter now. Because for the red triangle, its parameter is minimum. So for the other part, it will be a maximum. And then after we put in all the side lengths, we simplify to get the final answer 3 root 2 minus 1 over 3.